So by now you've watched the clip, uh, one of the possibly greatest sports movement in United States history when the 1980 Olympics were in Lake Placid, New York, and the United States men's hockey team upset the far superior Russian team uh, in, in Lake Placid. It's probably one of the most memorable um, events of Olympic history, and it really kind of brings together a lot of different concepts. Uh, the first one is probably the biggest uh, with team identification. Uh, the big thing at this time was when that was aired, it wasn't aired live. It was aired on a tape delay later in the, later in the evening, but it was broadcast live on the radio. So you had a lot of different fans uh, throughout the country who had listened on the radio and knew the game results. And before the game was even uh, aired on a tape delay, everyone knew that the United States had already won, which was a huge thing. Uh, you know, Olympics you know, are two weeks long, and then just before Olympics had started, the Americans had faced a crushing defeat to the United States to, to the Russian team, uh, losing 10-2, uh, like three days before the Olympics began. Uh, but there was a lot of positive momentum, uh, especially considering the time frame with the Cold War going on and a lot of tension with Russia. Uh, and there was also a chance of the Russians even boycotting the Olympic Games at this time. Uh, so if you haven't watched the clip, it, it's, it's the last minute of the game, uh, and you can kind of see the anticipation and, and the emotion building a lot in the stadium. And, and you can see the fan, and even for now, Michaels probably has one of the greatest sports moments in history with five seconds left on the clock, and then the crowd's chanting it down, and Al Michaels says, Do you believe in miracles? And the final buzzer sounds, and it just erupts. It's crazy. Uh, it was bedlam throughout the arena. Uh, you had the players rushing the ice. They were piling on the goaltender. And, and you had the American flags being waved all, ac all across the stadium. And it was just a huge sense of not just identification with the sport, but identification with the country, uh, especially considering everything that's going on at this time. I mean, to beat the Russians in, in that kind of game, and it wasn't even a gold medal match. It was only the semifinals. The winner went on to play in the gold, in the gold medal match, which we eventually did, and we beat Finland 3-2, to coming again from behind, as we've done all throughout the Olympics. And it kind of embodies that spirit that America is down but never out. And you, and you see that a lot throughout, throughout the games as leading up to this moment, and it really kind of builds on that identification that not just sport fans have with the team, but how a whole country can get behind a team at the same time. Uh, one of the things you see is, is that burging effect, the, the basking in, in reflective glory. Um, throughout the country, people were honking horns at each other. They were just excited, and everyone knew why. Everyone who had a television, everyone who had a radio, everyone who just kind of understood what was going on at this time period uh, was aware that the United States had pulled off one of the greatest victories that uh, the men's hockey team possibly ever has, has pulled off and probably one of the greatest sport wins of, of all time. Definitely one of those David versus Goliath stories where David ended up winning. And that's really what we're seeing in this clip as, as, as the fans are going crazy. Uh, and that, you know, pull, spills over into the streets and that spills over across the country. And it's kind of this, this giant wave effect. Um, and, and that's where what we're seeing is, 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 is a really strong team identification and a really strong, strong burgeoning effect. And also one that's not negative, one that had a very positive effect on the country, especially when two days later they would uh, finish their their uh, their challenge and win the gold medal. And so that's kind of what I, well, a couple of things I wanted to point out was just how much uh, identification with the team truly means to people. When you take into account what's going on at this time with the Cold War, with the Russians threatening to even boycott the Olympics, and then of course with Jimmy Carter's threatening to boycott their Olympics there when we go there uh, for the uh, summer games, I think it was two years later, and the nation's just rallying behind this, this very young team. Uh, they had one of the youngest uh, teams that ever compete for the men's hockey, for the USA men's hockey, mm. and they're playing against a bunch of professionals. So you really kind of have this underdog story, which the Americans aren't used to being, and you get this that sense of national pride, and not just for hockey, it, it, it had a effect on the entire country from baseball fans, football fans, and everyone knew about it. Everyone was aware of what was going on. And this is probably one of the greatest examples of identification that you might see uh, throughout throughout history is, is how much the entire United States got on the bandwagon, essentially, and just followed these guys. Uh, they made a documentary over, over this uh, film called Miracle on Ice. It was a Disney movie. And in that movie, you actually see a lot of these fans uh, merged even before this win happens, leading up to this moment. Uh, they've got telegrams and letters in the locker room, uh, you know, telling them, telling, trying to inspire the men to, to go out there and win. 
And uh, but what's really great is not only do we see it from a fan perspective, but we really see it from a player perspective as well. Uh, these players are from all across the country. They're all college students. And, and Herb Brooks, the coach, brings them together. Uh, a lot of crazy tactics, but he really puts on um, – probably has one of the best examples of forming a team identification and I, I think that's just important uh, I think from a marketing perspective when you can market how close knit a team is together and how well they're bonding it makes it easier for fans to identify with the team as well it's like oh look at what they have going on over there I want to be a part of that and so that's a lot of what you see in this clip is this fans wanting to be a part of this moment wanting to be to feel connected to this team and, and that's probably the strongest moment in this clip, and it's one of those sports stories that uh, when you kind of really involved, it almost makes you tear up a little bit. It's really hard for me to watch the movie Miracle on Ice without tearing up a little bit. And when Herb Brooks goes in the locker room, and you even see on the clip how he kind of disappears from the bench area, and he goes back to the locker room, and you see in the end of the video, it's because he's celebrating. He's, he's crying. He's so excited over what they just accomplished, and he knows the momentum of this moment. Uh, and it's just really great to see this kind of sport movement, and that's kind of one of the reasons sports is so important in our society is it's kind of it's a relief from the daily struggles that a lot of people face. It, it's, a, it's a break in the monotony of going to work and, and doing classes and, and trying to better yourself. But there's a chance to kind of relax and see others and then bond with others through that shared experience. And uh, so that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. It is one of my favorite sport moments in history. Uh, I'm really looking forward to any kind of comments you might have, especially I don't know what the age range in our, in our classes but if, if you were you know alive back in you know 1980 I'd really love to hear your point of view on kind of what you felt like uh, that kind of uh, momentum was that kind of feeling was emotion was at that time frame